I'm Marshall, and I know stuff. Stick around and I'll show you how to know some of the stuff that I know. One of our last episodes, I was uh, building the Marshall Tactical Utility Knife. Or uh, something that rolls off the tongue a little bit better and a name that was sitting right under my nose the whole time. The M-Tuck. <clears throat> so this uh, M-Tuck has been sitting on my workbench collecting oxidization for the past week or so. Because so I was vexed. I was vexed by how to finish this. Uh, I ran into some fundamental problems with putting the bevel on my M-Tuck, and I think I've uh, figured out a way to get around some of that. I was about to just go buy another uh, belt sander with a floating belt so that I could get at these angles on this thing, but uh, that wouldn't be a very martial thing to do. I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to modify my belt sander, and then we're going to finish up our M-Tuck. So the issue that I was having with completing the M-Tuck was that the steel on this thing is so thick and because it's a short blade, the angle had to be very abrupt. And what was happening is as I was putting this bevel on, it's running into the side of the blade. Uh, let me cut over to the belt sander and I'll show you just what I mean. Okay, so the issue that I was having and the cause of my frustration on this M-Tuck was the belt sander that I have has this edge along the belt and uh, most real knife makers they have a belt sander that the belt floats so they can uh, get the bevel all the way back whenever I try to put the bevel on this e the edge of the steel hits on that lip so because this lip gets in the way I can't bring the edge together in the middle of the knife and I was that's why I tried to do the double bevel to try to bring both of those together so what I'm going to do to remedy this I was looking at my belt sander and uh, I took the belt off and it looked like there was enough meat on this to where I could cut little sections out of the side on either side and they would still have enough rigidity to hold the belt and uh, still be a usable belt sander, but this wouldn't be in the way. That's going to be my quick, easy fix, my cheap fix to not having a floating belt sander uh, to bevel my blades, or blades with uh, steel this thick anyway. And uh, that'll be a much more martial thing to do than to just simply go out and buy uh, a problem, a solution to the problem. You're probably saying, but Marshall, isn't it dangerous to hack up a belt sander with an angle grinder? Probably. But I'll let you know how it goes. If I uh, mess up my tool, at least you won't have messed up your tool and you'll see that it was a bad idea to begin with. But I don't think that it's going to run us into any severe problems with a belt sander. And it'll get us through this M-Tuck today. So... Let's get out the angle grinder and start hacking up this belt sander. So what I'm going to do first of all is I always use 2x4s to make my jigs out of. So I'm going to hold my 2x4 uh, up to the uh, belt to see about how tall I want it. And I never have blades that stick up above that far. So I think that original mark that I made right there is going to do just fine. That's as far up as I want it on either side marked. Then you take all this cut off that's as low as my base will ever go so I'll take it just below that I'm never gonna need to go below that point and also I need to take the belt off to do this and once I turn it on I see that it's balanced there, so where it's sitting right there is a good guide to how far in I need to take it on either side. That's all taken care of there. Now, <clears throat> I'm also never gonna need to go in much further than about right where that curb is. I'll go in a little bit further. I'll use this as a straight edge real quick. 
just to draw my line down the side and that's how far in I'll take it. Just taking out that little chunk right there on either side is going to be enough to get my bevel. I think we're ready to go there. So I can take off my belt. And I'm ready to whip out the angle grinder. Okie dokie artichokey. Now this thing's running like a top. I've got the clearance on either side to be able to uh, get the bevel exactly where I want it. And I made sure to even go in a little bit on either side so that the uh, belt would overhang and then that way I could get at it like that. But I think we're ready to move on to uh, finishing the M-Tuck. Okay, now that little uh, quick side project is done. Cutting the, uh, the belt sander so I can get my M-Tuck properly beveled. Let's hope that there's enough steel left on the M-Tuck to where I can still get a nice clean bevel through the whole thing. I'll uh, get it on the jig now, start uh, sanding it, and we're going to see what comes of it. Uh, I might need to add something onto it a little bit later or else it technically won't be utility. It'll just be a knife. So maybe I'll put on a bottle opener or something like that afterwards. Okay, back on the jig. Let's clean this guy up. I like that a lot better. It's a nice straight bevel that way. I'm gonna give it a little bit more towards the middle because I could see that it was bowing a little bit and that's why it's uh, not consistent right there. I'm gonna take that bevel line up to the original one and then uh, flip it over and do the same thing. This is uh, this looks like it will turn out. Whew. All right, I got my bevels in it and uh, I was planning on taking them up about as far as the previous bevels were but uh, I'm going to leave it where it is because uh, I am going over the middle mark and I don't want to take too much of that edge away. If you uh, take too much of the edge away, it's going to be difficult to sharpen later on and it's going to uh, mess with the flatness of it. So I'm going to leave that there and uh, I'm going to figure out something to do with the handle too. I might just punch another hole for the handle because uh, if it doesn't have paracord on it, then it's not tactical. Tactical means it has paracord on it, right? So I'll uh, do something for the handle. It'll lighten it up a little bit too. It'll make the uh, overall piece a little bit lighter. This is thick steel, so it is still pretty heavy. Okay, with some careful drilling, now I've got a uh, skeleton handle so I can wrap it and uh, it really cleans up the look of the knife a lot too. It uh, makes it look a lot more purposeful and like I said from the beginning, I want it to look like a freaking robot did it. And it looks a lot more like that. It looks, uh, it looks pretty exact in doing that. Just some careful placement of those, uh, of those drilled holes there. And then I still need to add in some utility, so maybe a bottle opener still. I don't know. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean up the, uh, the finger hole a little bit. I'm going to round it over to give that a little bit more accent, just to give it a little bit more flair. And then I'm going to cut into the top of the blade a little square notch for a uh, bottle opener. Because just having paracord makes it tactical. It needs to do something other than be a knife for it to be utility. So... I'll add on a bottle opener real quick there. Chopping it up.
Okay, it's not polishing as easy as I wanted it to with uh, just the sisal wheel, so I'm going to go a little bit higher grit than just a buffing wheel, and uh, I'm going to uh, use a sanding disc. I'm going to uh, sand it a little bit to get some of the, uh, you can see the machine marks in it, and I uh, want it to be all smooth, so I'm going to take some of those down real quick, and then I'll move back over to my buffing wheel. As I'm pinching it in the vise, I'm uh, actually pinching it about halfway up so that the, uh, the surface of the knife is raised off of the vise a little bit. That makes it easier to uh, get in there with the sander. <laughs> yeah, that's looking a lot better now. I'm not worried about doing the edge, and I actually uh, purposely stayed away from the edge uh, with the sander because it's, it would take off too much meat all at once. And uh, I'm going to polish that with uh, whetstone. So I don't really need to worry about the, uh, the edge on this so far. Just polish all the other sides. All right. That's about as polished as I'm going to need it. It's uh, not super great. Like you can see the uh, machine marks in it and such. But uh, I don't really care that much about that. The uh, sander got as much of it out of there as I wanted. That is a nice, smooth, shiny piece of steel now. Uh, there is going to be... Two additional steps. I'm going to polish the bevel. The edge needs uh, polish on it and it also needs to be sharpened. And then I'm going to wrap it. I'll do a paracord wrap on it. I don't think I'll go real in depth with the paracord wrap on this one. There could be uh, its own video uh, doing uh, paracord wraps of different ties and such that you can do for handles. Um, I'll just tie this one real quick. I'm just going to put it through these bottom two and then uh, probably a little lanyard coming out the bottom. But uh, the M tuck is just about there. One more thing I realized I want to do. I actually want to put some uh, grooves along the spine so that you can rest your thumb on because after I polished it, you can feel how slippery it is and I'd rather have the grooves in there if you're going to be holding it so that you have uh, some traction on the spine of it. I'm going to put a couple of grooves in there real quick. There we go. Some grooves on the back side of it too, on the spine, so give your thumb a little bit of traction if you're uh, slicing through something, even if you're holding it without the thumb hole. It's good placement for uh, your thumb, gaining a little bit of traction on the back of it. I like that where it is. All right, we made it through another build. We went into the evening a little bit, but uh, had some stuff to do with the family. So uh, I had to come back and uh, finish the paracord wrap and uh, putting a little bit of polish on the bevel too. See, it's not super bright, but I didn't want to go too much further on it. And I, also, this is uh, one knife out of pretty much all of them that I did that I didn't make shaving sharp because I figured if it was going to be utility, I didn't want to have to uh, hone it over and over. So I did keep the edge down on this one a little bit more than I usually do. But uh, that was a fun little project, a little paracord wrap on it uh, definitely uh, brings out the, the tactical side of it. And uh, I think that bottle opener on the front of it looks kind of cool too. It, uh, I think some people might think that it might mess up the aesthetic, but I think it's kind of cool. And I even uh, retained a little bit of that M that I etched into it to begin with. Uh, whenever it was just a piece of uh, extra metal. So there you go. The M-Tuck Marshall Tactical Utility Knife in full effect. It was a little piece of metal that we turned into something that was practical and tactical and utility. So uh, if uh, you have a little piece of scrap metal sitting around, it wouldn't be such a uh, hard thing to do to just turn it into something that was a nice practical piece. Remember, like, subscribe, tell your friends, share, and let's keep knowing some stuff.